Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Coffee Break, the show where we break down interesting topics all within the time it takes you to enjoy a few cups of coffee. As always, my name is Clifford Swartz, and today I am joined through the power of the internet by a man named Marty Pandola, who is in Austin, Texas, and definitely not in California. How are you doing, Marty? Hey, doing great, thanks. And so Marty's here to talk to all of us about microchip MPOE and the infinite possibilities, which is a great title. But before we dive into that, I'm going to throw it over to Michael Pierce in the booth, and he's going to tell all of you wonderful people how to participate. How are you doing, Michael? Doing great, thanks. And uh, this is definitely a subject I, I like myself. I've been doing it for about six years, on and off. Man. Uh, even have a refrigerator at home powered by PoE. <laughs> and uh, working on Christmas lights for this year. So, for sure. Yep, so welcome again. Uh, thanks for joining us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. If you have any questions, please submit them to the chat, and we will try and get to them. Um, if we don't answer them online, uh, please uh, use live stream at microchip.com. Uh, send us an email there. And uh, if you like us, please share it. Uh, we, we like getting this out to as many people as possible. So back to you, Clifford. Thank you very much. So, Marty, eventually we're going to be talking about microchip MPOE. But just to go back to basics and for my own edification, quite frankly, do you mind breaking down what POE is? Oh, sure. So I think a lot of people are familiar with an Ethernet cable that uh, they attach to their computer, whether at the office or at home, to get wired data. Uh, what we're doing is we're applying a DC voltage to this to put power over the same cable. So you get power and cable, or p power and data over the same cable, thus eliminating the need for an AC adapter for whatever equipment you're powering. Uh, this technology, PoE, it's standardized by the IEEE. The IEEE 802.3 uh, specification defines PoE uh, currently supporting up to 90 watts uh, per, per channel uh, with data rates of 10 gigabits per second. So it's, it's a part of the wired networking, right? So when an IT person is deploying a wired network, uh, they're, they're, they're putting in switches. They look to get switches with PoE capability. And they power devices such as like an IP phone, an internet protocol phone, right? Would, would, would be on your desk, or an IP camera. Uh, this would be uh, like if you go to a store somewhere, you see these these black little dome cameras throughout. Right. Those are all powered by PoE. Yeah. Uh, also Wi-Fi access points. You see those on the ceiling as well. Those are that's also powered by PoE. Those are probably the three main applications. But also POS terminal, point of sale terminals. Uh, information kiosks, uh, even LED lighting today is powered by PoE, so quite a few uh, devices. So what makes PoE special? Why are there so many different applications that choose that as their preferred standard of uh, networking? Oh, okay, yeah, interesting. Uh, so uh, there, there's several reasons uh, what makes it so special. One thing is that uh, we, we like to consider it as an international power standard. So, like, if you travel around the world today, in the U.S., we have 110 volts, Asia, 220, uh, everybody's plug looks different, you need an adapter. Right. With PoE, you know, this, uh, what we call this RJ45 connector is the same wherever you go around the world, as well as the PoE voltages that we put on there. So, it's an international power standard. So, wherever you're using PoE equipment, it's, it's going to work throughout the world. Uh, it, a, a key also, a key thing is I, I mentioned how we're, we're putting the power and the data over the same cable. And this helps reduce the installation costs for equipment. So you, you can run one wire to your, to your equipment uh, to install it. It eliminates the need to run AC power, also eliminates the need for hiring a licensed electrician to install that AC. So that helps reduce the cost. It makes it very flexible, too. Uh, you can run... Ethernet cables be, you know, behind the wall, you know, the ceiling, whatever. So like a Wi-Fi access point, for example, it's best located up on the ceiling for the best coverage, right? So it's very easy to run that Ethernet cable up there to deploy that. Now, that same access point, if you did install it with uh, AC power, like you happen to plug it in, let's say, uh, let's say it locked up. I mean, right. that never happens, right? But let's just say it did. Uh, then you, know, you got to get out a ladder, climb up there, unplug it, you know, plug it back in to reboot it, you know, put the ladder away. If that same access point is powered with PoE and it locks up, I, you know, now it's just a couple of key clicks, uh, cycle the power through uh, re remote power management. So that's a, that's a nice little feature of, of Power Over Ethernet. Uh, and along that same line, you can even schedule your power. So like on the weekends, for example, you could turn off all your access points, you know, help save some energy. Absolutely. Kind of nice. and, and then the last thing I want to mention is that it, we call it a safe power meaning 
that the ports are not enabled unless a valid power device or PD is, is plugged in and detected. So if you stick your finger in there, you're not going to electrocute yourself. Or any other equipment that doesn't need PoE can be connected to that same port, and you're not going to harm that equipment. So it's not until a valid PD is detected uh, before that it turns on. That's nice. pretty nice. So that's the benefits of PoE. Do you mind telling us what is unique about MPoE and what MPoE stands for? Microchip MPUE, it's, it's microchip multi-power nice. over Ethernet. And it essentially, this, this is technology that will turn on any power device or PD that's attached to the network, okay? I mentioned uh, that uh, the, the, the PUE is standardized through the IEEE. Well, the, through the years, people also developed their own PUE solutions, if you will, their own PDs that may be non-standard. Uh, Microchips MPOE technology, we have some nice algorithms that will detect standard IEEE devices as well as non-standard devices and power them all up. So it makes it a it's very seamless support for your PoE, uh, for all PoE powered devices. Nice. So where do we see microchip MPOE fitting in industry? Oh, yeah. So the PoE ecosystem is kind of made up of uh, various network devices, applications, and, and vertical markets. The key applications I mentioned are these IP phones, IP cameras, Wi-Fi access points, right? Those have been the, the main bread and butter applications. But we're also seeing new applications. I mentioned uh, kiosks, uh, point of sale terminals, 5G uh, small cells. So as the 5G network is being rolled out and deployed, many of these small cells are powered by PoE, which is pretty nice. Uh, in the, the different vertical markets, I mean, it could be at retail, it could be healthcare, uh, enterprise, sports venues, anywhere where they're rolling out Wi-Fi access points, of course, um, these IP security cameras, card key access, anything that really is connected to Ethernet could be also powered by PoE. Nice, and so that's a pretty expansive list of uh, industry applications, vertical markets, and just everything that you can really think of. Why <laughs> do we see MPoE fitting there? Why, uh, why are people choosing MPoE? Well, when you're an IT professional and you're going to install equipment, you want to make sure, well, network equipment, okay, that's going to have PoE. And you have PDs or, or devices uh, on your campus, whether, whether they're Wi-Fi access points or uh, IP phones, whatever. They may not be standard IEEE devices, okay, but you want to have one set of equipment installed that's going to power up all these devices. And that's the key of microchip MPOE, is we're going to power up all these devices. So you can rest assured, as an IT professional, uh, it's going to power all your devices. Now, microchip, we, we have the, the, the chips that make um, for what we call the power sourcing equipment. Okay, so this is, these are the chips that actually inject the power onto that Ethernet cable. All right. And we also make the chips that, that we go into the power device or the PD. That's the devices that extract the power from the cable, all right? So that MPOE technology is in that, the PSE side, okay, to be able to detect any type of PD. But also, uh, the MPOE technology is, is, is the PoE systems that we make. PoE systems are the end application, the box. These are your mid-spans, your switches, your injectors, all right? Uh, we, you learn a lot over the years uh, of building these PoE systems, and we, we take those, uh, what we learn there and apply that back into our chips, and that helped us develop these algorithms over time to make it a, a very uh, robust solution for, for PoE. It's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, also, I actually want to make a point about uh, people may not realize that Microchip is one of the pioneers of PoE technology. Uh, through our acquisitions and heritage, uh, we started back in the late 90s. We were a company called Power Design. And we developed, a, we called it Power Over LAN at the time. And we did it actually to power up an IP phone for a customer. And uh, so we, we did that. It was pretty cool. We realized, hey, this is really neat. But in order for this to take off, uh, we need, it needs to be standardized. So we worked closely with the IEEE to get PoE technology as part of the Ethernet 802.3 specification, well, which it is today. And then through acquisitions of Micro Semi and Microchip today, we stayed very closely working with the IEEE so that as we evolve the PoE technology, we also made sure that the specifications evolved as well. Nice. So, as you were saying, Microchip's been there basically uh, the entire time from the very, very beginning in one way or another. Yes, we have. Where do you see PoE going in the future? Well, it, a lot of growth with PoE. So up to now, the main applications I've mentioned, Clifford, you probably can already recite them, IP 
phone, IP camera, yes. Wi-Fi access point. And those guys could really probably be powered by yeah, 30 watts, let's say. Uh, the new version of the 802.3 specification, BT, will support up to 90 watts of power. Well, now this opens up much wider range of applications that could be powered with PoE, essentially anything plugged into the Ethernet. So I mentioned, uh, you know, kiosks and uh, point-of-sale terminals, but even think of like LCD monitors, right? You could have a sports bar with all these LCD displays powered by PoE, and you could really easily reconfigure your, uh, your, your building however you want. Or if you had a point-of-sale terminal information kiosk, uh, you, you could, you know, during the holidays you need more of them. It's very easy to run Ethernet and, and reconfigure your store. And beyond regular Ethernet, uh, there's also what we're calling single-pair Ethernet, where this is for lower data rate applications, but we're seeing this like in industrial, like for HVAC systems, as well as automotive, uh, so that where they're, they're implementing single-pair Ethernet. We're also looking at developing solutions to put power on those on single-pair as well. So in summation, the future of PUE is up and to the right. Would you say that? It's up and to the right and being able to support infinite possibilities. I love it. So I think that's the end of the slide deck that we have. Where would you like to send people to as like a quick call to action? Very quick call to action. Any more information you want about PoE, Microchip PoE technology, is go to microchip.com slash PoE. There you find all the information about Microchip and PoE technology, as well as our PSC and PD chipsets and our PoE systems. Super easy to remember. Uh, as always, we're going to have links in the description and comments and everywhere else that you guys need them. Um, but thank you very much to Marty. Uh, I think we're ready for questions, if you are. You ready? Uh, yes. So yeah, what do we got, Mr. Pierce? Oh, just a, a little comment first. Yeah, there's actually a hotel, and I believe it's in Fort Worth, Texas, that is completely PoE powered right now. Wow. So, um, yeah, that, that's, they do everything from the actual, like you said, the TVs on the walls and the rooms, um, the bathroom mirror, the lights, the curtains, the, almost everything in the hotel room. It's, uh, it's actually really impressive when I, when I saw the videos of it. So Absolutely. Yep, so questions. Um, let's have a look. So there's one from Galit. Um, can you explain again the difference between two-peer power and four-peer power, and when would I use one over the other? Ah, okay, Galit. Yeah, I, I actually did talk about single-pair, uh, but let's talk about two-pair or four-pair. Uh, if, if you break open your Ethernet cable, uh, there's eight wires in there and, and twisted pairs, so there's four pairs uh, in there. And they've got different colors, okay. And the first couple versions of the Ethernet spec or the PoE spec, we used two of these pairs, okay. So we did a positive and a negative, and we were able to support 30 watts of power, and we call that two-pair power. And now to support up to 90 watts of power, we're using all four of these, so two positive, two negatives, for four-pair power. So you have two pair power or four pair power, two pair for less than 30 watts, and four pair power for more than 30 watts. Very well explained, thank you. So, and uh, we have one from Alex. Uh, I recently heard the terms PoE1 and PoE2. Can you explain what these are and if MPoE supports them? Okay, Alex. Uh, so PoE1 and PoE2, these are actually pretty new terms for the PoE community. Up until now, you know, we had a lot of acronyms. I used them in this talk already today, uh, but they talk about also PoE, PoE+, PoE++, UPoE. And the uh, Ethernet Alliance is, is trying to kind of keep it, make it more simpler to understand. So we, we looked at like other, like USB, Wi-Fi, you have USB 2, USB 3, you have Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6. So we're trying to do the same thing for PoE, where we have PoE 1 is first generation PoE, PoE2 is second generation PoE, okay, where first generation was essentially two pair power up to 30 watts, okay, and second generation supports the four pair power up to 90 watts. So PoE1, PoE2, and we're trying to get away from the PoE++ and trying to simplify the terminology. Yep, and we, we have one, and you're going to love the, his, uh, his handle. It's work for pizza. Wow. So... Uh, do the PDs Same. need to communicate back to the PoE hub somehow to tell the device the required power level? You know, similar to USB-C, or um, does MPoE detect this automatically somehow? If it's too technical okay, for you, I might pizza. help. 
Oh, okay, I've worked for pizza. Must be from Chicago. Uh, the um, Yes, the, the PD and the PSE absolutely communicate. Well, we, when you first plug in uh, t- to the port, uh, they, they, they do a detection sequencing to detect, are you a valid PD? And if so, how much power do you need? They call that classification. And then it will actually provide the amount of power that that PD asked for. So that, that is part of the uh, what we call the 802.3 BT uh, communication protocol between uh, the two devices. Absolutely. And uh, we've got another one from Jared. Um, for 802.3 AF, uh, what is more common, power on the empty peers or power on the data peers? Uh, it's so originally it was uh, so. So what the AF spec was the first version of the specification, uh, and, and at the time I, you know, when I talk about this this power uh, over the different two pair or four pair. Uh, what he's talking about was data would be on these two pair, and then the other two pair for lower data rates say. Uh, these would just be blank, nothing going on there. So originally we did put power uh, on that blank instead of having to overlay it on top of, on top of the data. Uh, is one more common over the other? Uh, today, no, it, they're, they're pretty much, uh, you know, originally, yeah, it was always on the blanks, but now it's pretty much either is fine. Uh, microchip MPUE technology will support whether the, the data is, or the power is on top of the data or on the spare pair, no problem. And, uh, and and PDs will work as well. So uh, it's, it's 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 a mix. There's not one that's dominant over the other. Cool. And uh, from M. Musovic, uh, can I have a little more information about power over LAN? Um, it was briefly mentioned. So. Yeah. So so power over LAN is what we what we were called power design back in the late '90s. That's what we called which eventually became PoE. It's just the name that we gave it. Uh, eventually, once it got part of the 802.3 AF specification is when we changed it to call it Power Over Ethernet or PoE. So Power Over LAN is not a term that's used today. Uh, that was our, the original name that we gave this technology. So, um, Also, um, there's another question from Jared. Uh, nice. So Power Over Data emerged with 1000 base T with a big question mark. So I think he's talking about PODL. So do you want to explain that uh, a bit? So uh, perhaps. Okay. So power. So PODL, power over data line, is for single pair Ethernet, and single pair Ethernet uh, does support 10, 10 megabits per second. Uh, it may support 100 megabits per second, uh, but the, the power over data line is, is the power for for that single pair power. And that's about all for today. That's about all. Uh, if we don't get to your question, make sure to email us at livestream at microchip.com, and we will make sure that Mr. Pandola answers them. But if we don't have any more, I, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Marty again. Um, huge thank you to everybody in front, behind the camera. It takes a whole team. And also thank you to the viewers, because we got some really, really good questions. And I always love seeing that engagement. Um, oh, and a joke. Yes, I forgot the joke. Um, I have a good one for you guys today. How do we get coffee to the Arctic? Oh, that's a tough one. I'm, I'm guessing maybe by the uh, Polar Espresso. Oh, he got it. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, I think that's my favorite joke that we've done so far. Um, is there anything else I'm missing, Pierce? Well, is, isn't this our, our last coffee break of the y- year? You are correct. This is our last coffee break for season uh, two. This but is number seven, but... Yeah, but don't, don't we have additional seasonal drinks coming up? Oh, yeah, there's not just coffee. I mean, like, there's eggnog, right? That's and the thing. And uh, there's what uh, well, some people like, uh, apple cider. Apple cider, for sure. And then I think we also got cocoa. That's, that sounds right, doesn't that it? That does sound right. And so we're happy to announce that um, in December next month, we'll be doing a coffee break holiday special where we'll be talking about lighting and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. So make sure to join us then, and uh, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll talk to you guys later.